What I want to do now is give you guys a short overview of what I feel is a must-have plugin if you're going to do web development. And this plugin is called the Web Developer Plugin, and you could find it at the following URL. I'll have it posted. Um, and essentially, you use this as a tool within Firefox, and there's a couple of ways to get this uh, plugin installed on your browser. Um, first thing to tell you is that I'm showing you the Firefox version of this plugin. There's also a uh, Chrome version, but personally, I think the Firefox version is much better. Um, so now, to actually download this thing, um, first you could go right here to Chris pedrick.com forward slash work forward slash web developer um, at the same time I'm pretty sure if you just google web developer plugin um, the first hit should be oh, the first hit is actually from um, Firefox but one, I guess the third one over here is Chris's uh, website directly and as long as you're looking at this from within um, Firefox. If you get, come right to the actually the Mozilla page over here, you're going to have this Add to Firefox button, and once you click it, it'll you know it'll do some stuff. And are you sure you want to install this? And then click Install Now, and there you go. It kind of tells you that this could potentially be malicious software. But as long as you're coming from Chris's site over here, if you're getting it from uh, Mozilla.com or Mozilla.org rather. Uh, or Chris's site, you're good to go. And once you install it, I think you're going to need to restart Firefox, and you should see something similar to what I have down here. This bottom row is the actual web developer plugin. And I say it's a must have plugin because I honestly use it all the time, especially when I'm working on sites that. I may have not necessarily created, for example, like looking through student sites or trying to correct uh, or trying to debug other sites that are running live and I'm working with some other developer. So here are some of the most basic things that I use in this plugin that I think are uh, most relevant to you as well. Um, if I start, let me start from, let's go from from left to right over here. I'm not going to go over all the options. and I probably won't even go over a fraction of them. Just a little tiny bit. Um, one of the options it has in the disable area is you could disable a bunch of things from running and I often use this disable JavaScript. For example, uh, one of my students is creating a website and here it is and if you look, if you click on, you know, garden blog, it, you think it takes you to another page, but instead she's actually using JavaScript, specifically jQuery, to show and hide things. Well, how would you even know that? Um, or how do I help her along the process with this? Well, I do, I use this as disable, and it says disable JavaScript, and if I refresh it, all of a sudden, look at that, all of the content's there. So now none of that JavaScript that she's using to hide some of these elements is happening anymore. So effectively, everything is, well, it's sort of taking you down to certain places, but it's not working the way it's supposed to. This is something I use when I'm trying to debug JavaScript, for example. That's a good one. Or if there's something annoying happening on a page and I think it's JavaScript, I'll disable it. Um, a very, very useful uh, category is this CSS. Now the CSS option has uh, has a whole bunch of stuff in here but mainly I use pretty much the following. First thing is here is the finished product of a project that I'm working on. Well I could use this disable CSS under disable styles all styles and look pretty good. This is what the page looks like without any CSS applied to it. And I could re-enable it. Now sometimes part of the assignment is um, you have to have all external CSS and no internal CSS. Well look at this. I could disable only certain CSS. Maybe I want to disable all in, in embedded styles, which means all styles that are inside of the HTML. 
Look at that. I did disable it, nothing changed. That's because everything in this particular document is external CSS. So, very good. I just want to make sure that I re enable it just in case there's any problems. Beautiful. Um, here is uh, View CSS is actually a useful one because once you click that, it'll take you to just the CSS for those specific pages. That's useful. It gives you an idea of what styles are in there. You notice how I just have two link styles, but if I had for example, local styles, embedded styles, those would be present as well. So that kind of gives me a quick overview of all the CSS going on on my page. Um, but probably the one element that I use the most from there is this view style information. And this is really useful. Now you notice how my uh, my pointer went to this crosshair and when I hover over things it kinda puts a red highlight on them. Now if you look up top over here in this section, Web Developer, it already tells you where they are located inside of the document. This uh, block quote over here that you could tell right up here is what? It's inside of the HTML, inside the body tag, inside of a container div, inside of a banner div, a block quote, and it's a paragraph. So okay, that just tells me where I'm nested. But here's a really cool part once I actually click on it it tells me all of the styles that are actually affecting the final look of this thing so you see that um, I have paragraphs since this is a paragraph I have this paragraph style uh, adding the line height and the word spacing to it you see how now I have these margins coming in from line 62 right there you see line 62 of my main.css and I also have more attributes affecting the look of this thing. So if I click on the portrait picture, there you go. You see what's actually affecting it. So I know that somewhere it's getting uh, 10 pixel margins added to it. And anyhow, I think you get the point. This is very, very useful for me, and I use it all the time. The next thing is forms. And what I use forms for is when I'm working on a form, for example, here's a form I created for the school that I'm working for. And you see, every time I want to test it, I got to sit here and, you know, populate each field with, since it's a required field, I got to go in and click the buttons, and this gets repetitive after a while. Well, under the forms tab, there's a cool feature over here to populate form fields. And let me show you as soon as I click that it already puts stuff in here obviously it's gibberish but um, that's fine with me because basically all I want to do is put stuff into these forms so I could hit the next and move on and see you know kind of mimic what a user online would be doing with it the next thing that's pretty useful is the uh, images button over here now the images button I use this for mainly two reasons. One, if I go image and I go file size, any images that are on there, these images are coming through CSS, but these images that are put in from the HTML, it tells me the, their file size. So by using that, I could basically it's a quick way for me to see to say, hey, this is about 50 KB, could this be better optimized? And actually to that same same point I could go image path which tells me where the image is located but it also gives me the image name so I could see what the file format of that image is so I'd say okay it's an Im that image is good as a JPEG it's about 50k um, if I needed to kinda shrink space on it I would probably look at maybe optimizing that a little bit more and kind of the same same deal over here. These are all ping files and they're about 25, 28. You know, I'll probably end up recommending to this student that instead of using pings, she change it to JPEGs because I think it'll make the file size a bit smaller. Um, we also have the information tab, which has a lot of good stuff. In the information part, I could select all sorts of things I want to see. Um, one of the things I use the most often here is div order. When I click that, I could quickly see it outlines what the divs are in my website. So this is easy for this helps me out a lot because 
it's just shows me how things are and nested inside of where so if I'm working on these things for students especially I don't have to I can look at their code from the perspective of the rendered version instead of just having to dig around in the code view like this and try to figure out what what's going on so that's particularly helpful for me um, it has that and I'm trying to think if there's much else eh, in the in the view there's a lot of these other elements too. I can't say that I've used a lot of them. This looks interesting. View JavaScript. There isn't any on there. Maybe we click here and go uh, information view JavaScript. Well there you go. It shows you all the JavaScript too. Um, I, I can't say I used it that much in that regard but there are definitely things down here that you want to see and yeah, it could be useful. Um, miscellaneous has a good one and what I like particularly about miscellaneous is this display ruler I use this pretty often again it turns into a crosshair and I could quickly find out about how big things are on my page because I could just outline stuff like that and you see how the ruler gives me the width and height for things and I could even go in here and say well uh, I want to make it about 500 so if I change that already I'm constrained to about 500 and I say oh okay maybe that's how I want it to be so I use that um, that's under miscellaneous and really the other one is tools and this is one I use very often which is valid the validation CSS and HTML now these actually send the page over to the W3C's online validator and if you look here at my URL it's local so this file lives on my computer so this actually won't work uh, on local files let's just see validate CSS we get an error but if we let's see now that's the local version as well here's an uh, an online document and if I use the validate CSS over there it will work. So, um, anyway, that's a brief overview of the Web Developer plugin. If you don't have it, you should ha get it installed. Um, I personally recommend the Firefox version over the Chrome version, although Chrome does have its own and it looks like this. Um, I think the Firefox version is better, although, honestly, it seems like this guy is a little uh, better looking. Or, yeah, I forgot which one. Maybe this is the... Oh, I forgot. No, no, this is the web developer plugin. There's one similar. Um, works works for Chrome, too. Although, like I said, overall, I think this one is much better than one for Firefox. So, if you don't have it, get it. Because it's definitely useful. Oh, and it's free. <laughs>